You know what bothers me in um, RPGs? I hate it when the level of an enemy only corresponds to what level you're supposed to be when you fight it and not to its actual relative strength, right? So it'll be like, you're level 15, which means you should be fighting level 15 enemies. And it's like, the level 15 enemy could be like a little grunt that dies instantly, or a big boss or whatever, but it's all level 15. It just means what level you're supposed to be. And it's like, it bugs me because you're in this situation where you'll be playing an RPG, and you'll be level 1, and you'll be fighting level 1 enemies. And then you'll go through a whole game, and 60 hours later, you'll enter a new town or whatever, and then you'll encounter, like, grunts, like, town guards for this town, and the town guards are, like, level 60. What? Why the fuck are they level 60? What do you mean? Like, I, I went to the town right over there, and the town guards over there are, like, level 18. Why are these ones level 60? Are you telling... Because I know that to an extent, the level is meant to be a gameplay mechanic and not like actually representative, but that's also kind of bullshit, right? Because you do fight an escalating series of threats. You know what I mean? You do, like, the higher level, you, you it's like, oh, well, now you're strong enough to beat the big demon lord. Like, that guy's a higher level, this V Rising. No, I'm talking about Baldur's Gate mostly, because at the beginning of Baldur's Gate, you know, the, uh, what are you fighting in Act One of Baldur's Gate? You've got, like, um, there are like guards and goblins or whatever, Minthara, you know, all that bullshit. And then later on, it's like, oh yeah, well, here's the guards at Baldur's Gate, and they're stronger than a troll that you would just find out in the forest. And it's like, really? Is that true? Is a single guard in Baldur's Gate strong enough that they could fight multiple trolls that they encounter in the forest? I don't think that's true. It's not like that in regular D&D. In regular D&D, you know, the level is the level. Would be cool if they kept some lower level enemies around. Would be a good reminder of your progress. I That's exactly what I mean. You should be like level 87 and then you go into a town in a new area and it's like the town guards here are not a threat to you. You're level 87. If you've defeated like a demon king, like at the end of Act 2 in Baldur's Gate, you'd literally defeat the god of death. <laughs> That's not even, that's just the act boss. That's not even the final boss. You, you defeat the avatar of the god of death. And then you arrive in Baldur's Gate and regular town guards are a threat to you. And it's, why? That doesn't make any sense. Again, in D&D, you go out there, you defeat like a, like a, a CR20 enemy. And then you go back to town. Town guards are like CR1. Maybe. If you're strong enough to beat something CR20, you come back to town, you, you are like a apocalypse threat at level 20 to anything in 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 D, D. you know your ass is meteor storming the city from a mile away you're you're annihilating them especially when they had the perfect excuse with the terminator guards yeah exactly exactly i guess act three gives you the robot to fear yeah and the robots are strong and all but then also the city guards are really strong because they don't want players attacking town guards yeah but that's kind of bullshit because in D, D, if your party is strong you can f annihilate cities like, past a point in D&D, the only threat to you in settlements is going to be like, does this settlement have a cathedral where there's a f archbishop who's like a level 16 cleric or something? Is there like a paladin brigade? Or, or do they overwhelm you with numbers, you know? Um, or yeah, is there like a resident archman? Is there like a real threat in here? Because town guards are not stopping you. Once you're past the... Honestly, once you're like level 9 or 10 in a party of four in D&D, the most towns will break into dust with when you arrive. Like, yeah, like easily. Yeah, I mean, unless there's something, but if it's a big capital city, like, okay, sure. Yeah, like you're going to go up there and you're, you're going to find like Paladins of Tear and they're going to mulch you. Yeah, but if it's just like a regular town, like a like a 20K people town or whatever, they're <laughs> You can do what you want. Level five, let's be honest, you can just rinse your way through guards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends on like the, the, you know, strength of the guard or whatever. It would have been cool if it was a 200 HP steel watch with a 10 HP guard walking around with it. I kind of would have liked that a little bit. Yeah, you know, 37 HP, whatever. High level wizards are basically walking newts. Yeah, Meteor Storm, or is it Meteor Swarm? Meteor Swarm can just like actually delete a town from a distance. It's crazy. Cast that shit once a day with no cost. What the f
in worlds like these, respect for veterans should be like assumed or death penalty. I just, I think um, it it really varies depending on how you're handling it in narrative or like what makes characters stronger, you know? I don't know. To be honest, the flaming fists you do fight are the vanguard of their headquarters. It makes sense they don't just put rookies there. Yeah, but you you fight flaming fists in act uh, one and they're much weaker. That's what I mean. It's like, it, it's that just convenience scales the game to your level. But it's like, no, you fought flaming fist guys back in act one if you chose to. And they're like level five or whatever. That's fine. I don't believe the average town guard can be level nine. I don't believe that. That's not... That doesn't sound right to, at all to me. Um, Flaming Fist has ranks. Okay, but you're making excuses right now. You know perfectly well that they don't have it so that every single Flaming Fist guard in Baldur's Gate is themselves like a high-ranking member who is individually much, much stronger than anyone they had out there in the outskirts protecting the f captain of the Flaming Fists, uh, the f guy's dad. You know, like like you're, you're, you're just saying shit. You know, you know I'm right. You don't need to be contrarian about it. Don't they have tadpoles? That's a that's a different thing. That's a different thing. Honest question, is there politics tonight? Yeah. I, I tend to hand balance, so I wouldn't really know, Masque. Did you hear about the woman versus tree meme? No. What is the woman versus tree meme? It is Baldur's Gate 3 still a good game? Yeah, it's what do you mean still? Yeah, it's fantastic. It's a, it's a phenomenal game. I played it I played it front to back three times. I beat it uh honor mode. No 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 party wipe. Yeah, but in any competent city, they'd still have uh, better than normal CRD. Okay, I, but you're just arguing to argue. Like, you know what point I made, and you know my point is correct, and you're thinking, like, maybe I can add on to what he said with, like, a contrary position. But I already know the things you said. Like, I, everything you have to add, you know it doesn't contest what I've said. It's just, you just, like, I make a point, and everyone in chat's like, well, um, if you think about this, and then you say something that doesn't contest what I said. It's like, come on, please. It's a response to the bear question. Would you rather open up to a woman or a tree? Dude, is that what f MRA red pill guys came up with? That's the best they can do to the like effortless uh, uh, understandability of woman, or sorry, man versus bear, woman versus tree, and to compare the threat of physical violence from a man versus a bear. They compare it to like the threat of a woman being shitty to you if you open up to her. Dude, the, the, the 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 fact that their like version of it is so flaccid and impotent and meaningless in itself is kind of a reaffirmate. You know what a bear wouldn't do? A bear wouldn't come up with a shitty woman versus tree meme. And what do you guys even like? If I, the people who created this like little this little scenario, they're not talking to women. They're not talking to women or trees. Vosh about town guards being high level. How would town guards stop D and D monsters otherwise? Towns aren't normally attacked by big monsters. Like that's how like. By, with numbers, mostly, you know? Like, it's like 20 guards with, with halberds, and, and maybe a troll comes out of the... But, like, the, if a dragon attacks a city, man, unless the city is, like, Baldur's Gate or something, like, yeah, the city's... That's how it is. You don't have, uh, like, every town doesn't have, like, just random heroes or, or like, super-powered guards or whatever. You have to remember, man, like, the average town guard, if a town guard was level 9, do you know what that would mean for their strength? They'd be able to, like, crush steel in their hands, like, the, the, assuming that they're, like, the equivalent of a warrior, or a fighter class, right, for, for what they do, or ranger or whatever, they'd be like, honey, I'm home, and, like, push the door open, the door shatters into splinters, like, le level 9? Your town guards are level 9? That would be, that would be, like, wandering into, like, a, a random American former mining town in Appalachia, and finding that every single guard there is a Green Beret member. Like, you see a bunch of guys in ghillie suits with, uh, with, with, like, uh, uh materiel rifles lurking around the outskirts of Tesla. What the f are you guys doing here? And it's like, well, if we don't have Green Beret members as our guards, what do we do if the Taliban attacks? The Taliban doesn't attack! You're in West Virginia, man! That's not, you shouldn't be ready for that. If the Taliban attacks your town, you lose. That's your role in, in the dynamic. Hello, Artemy. Why don't the town guards level up? Th this is just a contrivance of how you want leveling up and having more HP to work in a game like D&D because it's like a and because you can do it two ways you can basically do it like your HP represents your luck or your sort of like durability but it doesn't literally mean you can tank hits greater than a mortal could like if a, if a sword attack does eight damage that would one shot a regular person but to a high level character that would like scratch them and the, the logic would be oh 
it's it's not like your body is physically more durable. It's that you didn't really get hit by it. You kind of like, you know, sidestepped it. For me personally, the way I think of it as some people just got the sauce, man. And if they've got the sauce, uh, the, the magic just kind of infuses in their body and makes them stronger. I like the idea of them literally being physically more durable and more strong. Um, you know, if they've got the sauce, then the, then they, they, they attract the magic to them. You know, I mean, it's, ma magic exists, right? It's not like that. It's not like that's an unreasonable. What if the guards have been canonically killing orphans and rats for the XP grind? That would, that would be a great like meta town to visit where it's like, all right, yeah, all the guards are buff as because they just have like a rat breeding. They're, they're, they've all been gaining like five EXP per combat and they're, they're walking out there um, jacked to the nines, like tw level 20. They're launching boulders at you. The Gith patrol is even more immersion breaking. You're telling me these quick. Yeah, that too. The fact that you can um that you can kill the Gith patrol at the beginning, like I don't again, it's fun gameplay wise. I'm kind of like I'm kind of like, you know, whining here. But the Gith the the Gith like uh a uh, hunt team is like elite shit. Like if that was in a D and D module in regular D and D, they would you'd be like, ah, hey, what's up? Uh, yeah, we're not hiding the artifact, and they would find out you're lying. Then they'd just kill you, like instant, like you would party wipe in a in a second, you know. But at level five, you can beat them just barely. It's a tough fight. Yeah, that'd be that'd be like level fifteen shit, you know. And it's like, oh, I guess the Gith aren't that strong. I guess I guess the Gith are about as strong as a group of goblins you find in the forest. And it's like, no, that's just the game standardizing stuff. You know, I, 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 I don't, I don't know if I like that. Yeah, Kithrak Voss, like, Kith, Kith, Kithrak Voss would probably be, like, represented by a higher than level 20 on the, on the character sheet, you know? Like, he's up there. No spoilers. Shut the f*** up. Play, play Baldur's Gate 3. Come on. Could this be a problem with fantasy games in general? I think it's a problem with RPGs in general. I just think you should have consistent leveling consistent le like a level should represent the actual str and you should be like fair with that because that's how the regular DD is you can't you can't be playing D D and then encounter like a level five version of an ancient demon god that you defeat i mean i guess you can it's D D. you can make up whatever you want but if you're going by anything even remotely approximating the rules you can't like if you like the most you could do is like oh here are some cultists of them or whatever you know but you couldn't you you couldn't like it, it, the game doesn't scale down to you for that ever played an old gothic game no i've seen youtube videos though you could do a shitty avatar of a god um yeah like a really shitty one a really shitty god yeah I think it's more a problem of computerizing a TTRG. You could do all, you could, you could make all of this work with like canon D&D rules. You can make all of it work. You would just have to structure the story appropriately. There are low level D&D &D modules that still have pretty high stakes. Um, Mgubliet, the, the goblin, the, the, the f goblin wa they do, right? The, the, when they, they get like, um, what's the, what's the module when they, they lose their shit, uh, 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 uh the, the, Slave of the Feywild, the goblins. I, I think the boss there, the goblin boss you fight at the end is like level 7 or something. Because goblins aren't that strong. Which is pretty racist. Booyag? Oh, uh, Booyag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another issue. It's the racism, man. You're telling me, where are the goblin heroes? Right? You, like, there are, no, there are no goblins who are like barbarians or whatever? Why not? You know? I know they're small, but like, relative to how strong you get as a level 20 barbarian... You can play as them. In regular D&D, &D, you can do whatever the f*** you want. But yeah, they're a canon race you can play as. Uh, you, you, you get kobolds in the, um, in the, in the, the monastery bow game. How does one even get into D&D? &D? Uh, I don't really know what a good onboarding, onboarding point would be at this point, to be honest with you. Probably module stuff would be my guess. No, I mean it's a playable race. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, sorry. You mean kobolds, not, yeah. Canid kobolds are superior to lizard kobolds. Somebody's been watching Dungeon Meshi. Nice, Divinity. I actually haven't, Lamau. Well, you should. It's good. Yeah, dogs are... Kobolds are like dogs in Japanese lore.